Um, well, you, you, you just said something uh, before that, that I thought is interesting and that we should talk on, and you said that, that we're meant to be healthy. And I would assume that the same way you said we're meant to be healthy, that we're meant to be rich and we're meant to be happy. How do, why aren't people and how do we get back to this natural state of where we are meant to be? Okay, and that's how we were born. We were born, uh, we came here with certain agreements because I do not believe we just popped up on this earth. And there are a whole bunch of my friends and uh, people who think of it this way. Uh, take, for example, you and I have talked about Richard Bach, mm -hmm. the author of Jonathan uh, Livingston Seagull. Right. I've, I've told you about Brad Steiger, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, Deepak Chopra, many of us who uh, feel that uh, we have uh, lived forever, if you will. In fact, within each and every one of us is this feeling, uh, like the poet says, a certain murmur in the soul tells of a world to be. As travelers hear the billows roll before they reach the sea. So if we sit back quietly and listen, we will feel things from other times and other places. And it's totally, totally against my, my thinking that, uh, let's assume this has nothing to do with God or whichever one there is, who the worship or a lack of God or anything. It just has to do with a, a kind of a feeling within ourselves that if there is a God, and I do believe there's a higher power, then this God's got to be really nuts if he is perfect or she is perfect, to create things that are defective. Mm -hmm. For goodness sakes, if I were to go buy a DVD player and it's defective, I'd return it. So it came to me at a very early age, and from listening to some of the masters of the Far East talk, some of the yogi masters, I thought, no, we were not born defective. We were born with all the potential we could ever want or have, and that we may have existed before, which some people call past lives, I call alternate existences, and so forth. It doesn't matter what name we give to it. And so we may have agreed to come here. For example, let us say that uh, I and a bunch of us are traveling uh, through the universe. No body, no physical body, but just beautiful little points of light, if you will, a spirit that you can't see but we're totally conscious, and we're passing by, and uh, one of us says to the other, hey, uh, let's stop by Earth. There it is, way in the distance. It looks blue. Let's stop by Earth and see what they're up to today or these days, and it's 21st century or 20th century, and we get here, and we start uh, uh, looking at them, and we say, well, maybe we can help them do some little thing, okay, I've got this, uh, I've done all these other things, and so we're somewhat like a Star Trek episode, and we are born into this world with agreements where we agree that, uh, okay, I will bo be born without a leg. I will be born to a family that is going to abuse me, but during that period I will grow <clears throat> and become something very special. Who knows, uh, Wayne Dyer, for example, was an orphan. Uh, he was in foster homes for a long time. Uh, the, the, there are so many others who were blind or deaf or what they, cho they chose these things, except you don't remember when you get caught up in earth life that you did choose it. And yet, some of us say, especially me, I say, that contract we signed before we came here, at the bottom of it, it says, subject to change for any reason at any time without any penalties. So we can quit the game anytime we want, which means if we are perfect to start with, and religions, many of them teach us that we're not, we are, the, uh, we are a, a kind of a clod of clay, and now we've got to start becoming something in the potter's hand. And uh, some of us think that no, we are perfect to start with, almost like the David statue in the stone. It's there all the time. And all we've got to do is create the way, learn, grow, and use the tools we have so that that beautiful statue of David will come out, or so that that beautiful part within us will come out. Therefore, I do not believe that disease is a natural thing for a human being. I think we are hypnotized by 
advertisements, by all the kinds of things we see around us, by fear, by medicine, by everything else. Uh, um, who is it I was talking with? And he wrote it in his book, Deepak Chopra. Deepak and I go back uh, many, many years to a time when people thought that uh, a Deepak was probably a rare Chinese disease. <laughs> and Deepak and I were talking about um, aging and growing old and dying, and he quoted a Greek who said, people grow old and die because they see other people getting old and are dying. And so it is with us, a kind of a joint energy is formed where we are influenced by the energy around us, and we in turn influence that energy. So in our natural state, we should be healthy. I couldn't think of uh, most of the uh, great teachers of history. Um, let, let's take... Uh, Abraham or Moses or all the way down through Jesus into any of the other ones. Think of it, uh, Jesus going uh, saying to his mom, Hey, mom, I got to go to the drugstore because I need some aspirins. Or Abraham saying, uh, You know, uh, send out the camel boy to get me some uh, something for because I'm not feeling too well. I think many of these people were able to transcend the need for that by doing a number of very interesting things. Number one, stilling the conversations in their minds. The longest conversation that keeps going on from the day we were born is the one we have with ourselves, right. where we're talking to ourselves every moment. So if we can still that conversation and get into a point where we're almost in non-thinking mode, we will find that the universe will send us all the solutions we want. And then it's up to us to do something with it. 